Hey guys, Hardly Brief Dan here with another episode of the Unity Make an RPG series. Today we're going to keep working on the game clock that we started last time. We're going to expand the co the coroutine that we created and uh, start talking a little bit about the event system that we're going to be working on, uh, or the event manager, excuse me, that we're going to that's allow us going to fire different events when different things happen. Uh, and uh, we're going to mold that all into our day night cycle that we'll eventually get to. Uh, but I'll do a quick little rundown of what we did last time. Uh, we've created this game time manager prefab, and we set up a game time manager class or script in C sharp that allows us to change the day length in minutes. And when I unpause it here, we can see that we're putting the time, the current time, in the uh, console here. And when the ga game day is over, uh, we reset the clock. Pretty simple, uh, but we want to add some more functionality to it, and that's what we're going to work on today. Uh, so here I'm in the script. I'm in the um, game time manager class here that we worked on. And the first thing we want to do is add uh, a couple, two methods first, and I'll talk about them as we go. Uh, the first thing, though, the first method we're going to do is a pause game clock method, like that. Uh, and the next one, oh, you know, and actually what I'll do. Uh, it's going to debug dot warning. We're going to do a warning so we can see it's more visible, and we're going to say game uh, clock paused. Pretty self-explanatory. And then we're going to set a bool value to uh, true, and that bool value we need to create. So go up to the top. We're going to add a private bool, and it's going to be called is paused, and we'll set that equal to false. So when we start, we're not paused. Um, Pretty simple. So let, let's. I'm going to grab that is paused variable. Come down to our pause game clock method, and we're going to say is paused is true is equal to true when we hit the pause game clock. I'm going to copy all that. Control C to copy it. Control V to paste, and we're going to change the name to unpause, and we'll say unpaused here, and then is paused is equal to false now. So now we have a way to. We can call these functions just to change this boolean value. It's it's doing nothing more than that. Uh, but we're going to add these to a event handler later on. So that's why I wanted to create them now. Um, so now that we have these, we're going to use the void update function again, um, just for testing. This is just because in reality we'll have an input manager to handle our input. But since we don't have that set up, we're going to do this. We're going to check for an input, and I'm going to use get key down, and we're going to search for a key code. So key code. And you put a period, and then I'm going to be looking for the space bar. Uh, and when I hit the space bar, I want to either pause or unpause the game. And the way we do that is with the if statement. We'll just do if. If is paused is uh, true, then we want to unpause the game or the clock. Now, else, and actually, I don't even need. Un, uh, let's see, unpause. You don't need the brackets if you have one line underneath the if statement. If you did not know that, just a little tip. So if is pause is true, then we want to unpause the game clock. Otherwise, we want to pause the game clock. All right. Uh, so the, there's that functionality. So if I go in Control S the same, go into Unity, and I press play here, uh, and I hit the you see we're pausing. I'm t telling it paused, unpaused, but it's not doing anything. It's not interacting with the timer. So how do we do that? Well, we need to manipulate or change some code, add some code, really, to our coroutine. And it's pretty simple, and I'll explain uh, all of it as we go. So what we're going to do is, under while is running, the first thing we want to check is to see if is paused is true. And if is true, then we want to do something. Well, what do we want to do? We want to return nothing and keep looping that. So we're going to yield, return, and then null, which is what we talked about at the very beginning with a very basic coroutine, returns nothing. Uh, so what this is going to do is, if this returns true, it's just the while loop is just going to come to, it's going to do these, uh, what, six, seven lines of code here. It's just going to come down and um, run. And we don't really even need these brackets. Like I said, we could just do that if you want. It's going to say, hey, if this is true, uh, yield return null and go back to the start and just keep looping this until this returns false. Once this returns false, what do we want to do? Well, we want to increment our time. 
So we're going to use the brackets. I'm going to copy all this code, cut it, paste it, and there we go. Now we've implemented a pause, and uh, we can check that. So control us to save. Let's go into Unity. I'm going to start our timer here and clear all that up. Click the game. Paused. Game clock paused. You can see that we're not incrementing time anymore. Unpause. We pick up right where we left off. Pause. Unpause. Pause. Unpause. Pretty fast. Works fine. Not too many problems. Um, what, I, what we want to do now is I want to move this code into its own little method down here just in case we ever want to add more to it. So we're going to say private void. Uh, and we're going to call this um, reset game clock. And I'm just going to cut that. So if we ever add more code to this, if there's if this becomes a little more complex, we want to have a method that we can just change and not have, actually have to go in our coroutine and change it. That's why I'm doing this. It's going to have the same functionality. It's going to come down. It's going to say days over, current, you know, same stuff. But if if we ever want to add more to it, then we can do that. And what I mean by that is, let's say you have a rest feature where if your character your character can go to bed, and if they decide to go to bed and they wake up. Oh, actually, Skyrim is a perfect example. Skyrim allows you to wait, right? So you could use this reset game clock, allow the player to wait, and reset the game clock. You can pass in a value and reset it to a certain value, or check for a bool. Uh, say, hey, did the player wait for five hours? Yes, then plus five to current game time. That's really up to you, uh, but I wanted to create a little method here that allows you to change it for your project. So hopefully you get that. Uh, let's control S to save. And the biggest, the other thing I want to talk about uh, in this video is we need a way to disable this coroutine. We need to kill it somehow. We need to say, if we're not using it, we don't want it to be bogging down our system. So if we just let this run, it will run forever. And if we let it pause, that pause will run forever. And maybe there's a certain point you're in a cutscene or something where we don't need the game clock. Well, how? what can we do to get our resources back. Well we need to, what I call kill it, we need to stop it and he can't run anymore. Uh, and the way we do that is by a couple methods we're gonna call private void. We're gonna call it kill game clock and you can name it whatever you want. These aren't, these are what I'm coming up with. Um, and the only thing we have to do is we'll, we'll do debug log warning so we know what we're doing and we'll say killed game clock okay and we will we need to set two variables we need to change two variables the first one is is running we'll set that one equal to false so as soon as is running is equal to false this while loop fails and the coroutine is done it will no longer run so after we do that we stop the coroutine we want to set is paused To, uh, false. So this is a, another preference here. Uh, when I pause the game, if I pause the game and then we go into a cutscene or something or, and I exit the game, I want to make sure that we're not paused anymore when we start it back up. Uh, but maybe you don't want that functionality. If you want, if you want the game to be paused and you kill the game clock and then you turn it back on, then uh, you might not want this variable. But I'm going to have it there uh, just so I know that when I kill the game clock and I start it back up, it's going to immediately start back up. That's all that does. So here we're turning off the run. We're telling it's not running anymore, and we're telling it's not paused anymore. Um, and we're going to create one more method here, and it's going to be a return type void, and we're going to say enable game clock. Uh, and I'm going to cut this, cut the start coroutine. We're going to cut it and we're going to paste it down here. Oh, and I accidentally copied something I didn't need. So we'll do game clock. And I was just thinking if you don't want this, if you want to kill the game clock and the game's still paused, like time's still not running, you could cut that and just paste it in here. Uh, so when you start it, we know that it's enabled. What's something else you could do? Um, it's really up to you how you want to do that. Uh, we also want to go ahead and say is running. 
before we start it again, we want to say is running is equal to, to uh, true. And that's pretty it. That's pretty much it. I'm going to copy this enable game clock. Copy that. And we're going to paste that in the on enable. So that it, when we start, when we enable our game object, it's going to turn on. It's going to do all this. It's going to say, hey, pause is false. We're running our game clock. It is running. And we're going to start the coroutine. And then we need to actually implement this kill game clock uh, method. That's the last thing we'll do. So I'm going to copy that. And up at the top, below our void on enable, we're going to add another uh, mono behavior method called on disable. So that means when I turn the game object off, uh, when it gets turned off, I exit the game or something, then this will will turn it. It will get rid of it. We'll kill the coroutine. So we want to call kill coroutine or kill game clock. So let's test this out. So uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to disable the game object from the start. So when I hit play, it's going to be disabled. I'm going to enable it. Then we should enable the game clock and we should start running the game clock. I'll pause and unpause it uh, and then I'll turn off the game object and then I'll turn it back on and then we should see everything reset so let's let's test it all out make sure it works and we don't have any errors perfect I'm gonna turn off the game object here in the inspector just like that see it's grayed out I'm gonna press play game up the game clocks not running we see that it's not incrementing I'm gonna turn it on and our current now our game clocks running I'm gonna pause the game we can wait a few seconds. Should pick up where we left off. Unpause the game. It's at six. I'm going to pause the game again. I'm going to turn off the game object. We killed the clock. I'm going to turn it back on. Day is over. It started going again. So everything's working like we want. I can pause the game again. Unpause the game. Game's over. I can kill the game clock. Start it back up. Kill it. Start it back up. Uh, the reason why I'm not resetting the time when I kill the game clock, maybe you want to. Uh, but basically, my idea of when I kill the game clock will be for maybe like a cutscene or something. I just want to turn off that coroutine for a minute uh, for, for just the duration of the cutscene. So I can turn off the game clock uh, and keep the same game time, right? So that's why I didn't do that. Maybe you want to um, have a, another one kill game clock and reset time. And that resets time to zero. Or you can just call reset game time, reset game clock. It's up to you. Again, that's going to be personal preference for your project. Uh, but uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully these are working out for you. You're not run it, running into too many problems with the coroutines and stuff. Uh, they're a lot of fun to experiment with. You can do a lot of stuff with them. Uh, in the next video, we're going to start looking at event system and event manager handler. And how to subscribe methods to an event using C Sharp Delegate. So uh, please like, subscribe, comment, let me know how the, how the channel's doing, what you like, what you don't like, and I'll talk to you guys next time.